Well, hello and thank you so much for joining us on CBS 8 Plus. I'm Heather Myers. Here at CBS 8, we are working for you, getting to the bottom of problems you've asked about, and we're looking for solutions. We start with a story that we have been following for much of the last year, and it seems to be getting worse. Viewers reaching out to us, alarmed by skyrocketing homeowners insurance bills. One reason is that insurance companies are using a new mapping system to determine if your home is considered to be high fire risk. Now the state claims that if you take safety steps, you can get a discount on your insurance. CBS 8 is working for you. I spoke to a local insurance broker to find out more about this. Over the last week and a half here in my office, we've been inundated with phone calls from new clients with the, this exact problem. San Diego insurance broker Kiyoma Yoshizumi says the calls are pouring in. San Diegans needing help after finding out their homeowners insurance rates are skyrocketing. We're getting about two to five new phone calls a day from new clients, basically saying two things. One is my premium went up three to five times last year. Can you find me anything better? or I'm being non-renewed by my current insurance company. A viewer, Tony Obergon, told our Steve Price that his farmer's insurance bill went from $383 a year for his two-bedroom Mission Valley condo to more than $2,100 a year. With the cost of everything rising, and then on top of that, the insurance premiums doubling, tripling, quadrupling, it's too much for people. Kiyoma says one of the reasons homeowners are seeing significantly higher rates is their updated wildfire mitigation score. He says insurance companies use a mapping service and give each home a score from 0.1 to 100. 0.1 means it's very unlikely a wildfire could burn through the area and every mitigation effort has been taken. 100 means it's extremely likely a fire could destroy the home. They're called fire maps that the insurance companies use. These were recently updated, I believe, last year in 2023. And considering California has been in a drought, almost every single home out there that has this brush score went up. We contacted the California Department of Insurance. They didn't respond to our request for an on-camera interview, but did issue a statement saying in part, while rate changes have been approved under the auspices of Proposition 103, Californians continue to pay less on average than other states for home and auto insurance. The statement went on to mention first in the nation mandatory insurance discounts for homeowners who take proactive steps to protect their homes from wildfires. The department's website mentions this under the Safer from Wildfires page. The 10 steps include upgrades to your roof, eaves, windows and your defensible space plan, among other items. What the website doesn't mention is how to get the discount once these measures are taken. Kiyoma says the insurance companies will have to be informed of this plan too. I don't think the discounts have hit the market yet because these insurance companies are still looking for their premium rate increases and also possibly having to adjust their policies moving forward in 2024 in order to meet these requirements that the Department of Insurance of California have now put forward. The insurance broker we spoke with said that he has had a lot of success shopping around and finding cheaper rates for his clients with other insurance companies. He also says to make sure that if your insurance company is suddenly willing to lower your premium, that they aren't reducing your coverage. Now to another story that CBS 8 has been following closely, rising water costs. A La Jolla man seeking class action status has filed a lawsuit against the city of San Diego over water rates. This comes weeks after those rates went up. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is working for you on this story. She has the details on the lawsuit's claims and how you can get involved. The city adopted a tiered water rate system last September. In doing so, the lawsuit alleges they're charging people unilateral fees, which is illegal in California. One month after San Diego water rates rose by 5%, the city is being served its first lawsuit. Filed yesterday on behalf of a La Jolla man, it alleges San Diego imposes, quote, above cost rates unilaterally and is doing so without voter consent, both of which the plaintiff claims is a violation of Proposition 218, which is supposed to protect taxpayers from certain increases without their approval. 
vote on the matter before us today. Last September, the San Diego City Council voted to raise water rates by nearly 20 percent over 13 months. The first rate increase went into effect December 1st. In July, we'll see a 5.2 percent jump, followed by an 8.75 percent increase next January. I want to hold them accountable. We have two properties, both of which will be affected by this. Several people spoke out at that meeting to oppose the rate hikes. A plaintiff named in the lawsuit says he submitted a written complaint. Essentially, he says customers should pay for the water they use, but should not be on the hook for anything more than what that water costs, unless voters say it's okay. I reached out to a city spokesperson who told me to contact the city attorney's office. As of this afternoon, we have not heard back. I also tried contacting the attorneys listed on the lawsuit as well as the plaintiff himself. I am still waiting for a response. The lawsuit does seek class action status, meaning other water customers can jump on board. To contact the attorneys involved, go to CBS8.com and click on this story. For CBS8, I'm Shannon Handy. Shannon, thank you. Other news we're covering, a pair of local Walmarts are set to close their doors for good. One of those locations is at the Parkway Plaza area in El Cajon. The announcement is concerning for some people who live nearby who fear that they may be facing what people refer to as a food desert. CBSA's Brian White is working for you to find out where the next best options to shop are. I talked to employees in here. They tell me this Walmart is closing in less than a month. Now, if you live around here, that's one less option for people to depend on these affordable prices for groceries. I was actually pretty surprised because I feel like this is a fairly busy and large Walmart. Some people have heard the news. I hate the fact that they're closed. And some people haven't. You haven't heard about this? No. Hey, you don't want them to close the store, right? No. But no matter who I talked to, no one was happy about this store closing. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, you know, it's been here a long time, and now they're closing it. What will you do when, when they close? I have no idea. I think this a location for Walmart is uh, very good for people who just need to walk here. Um, so I think it's going to create kind of a desert for them, a food desert. I looked up the area around this Walmart on the USDA's Food Access Research Atlas. The information is a few years old, but the orange color represents a low income area where a significant number of people live more than a half mile from a supermarket, what they call a food desert. And the yellow indicates where a fair number of people also don't have vehicles. Sometimes for families that don't have a car, maybe a ride that could take 10 minutes. It could, it could turn into half an hour, 40 minutes, an hour to just go for grocery. Alondra Alvarado is president and CEO of the San Diego Hunger Coalition. The nonprofit's mission is to fight hunger in a holistic way. We are seeing this with rural communities in this county. They don't have access to fresh produce, and we see all the needs and the barriers that they have. And then closing down those markets are closer to the families. We have to think about how this is going to affect their budget. As for alternatives, I found this Aldi supermarket on the other side of Parkway Plaza. It just opened eight months ago. It's um, budget friendly and um, I have a young daughter, so I try to get like fresh produce and things that have um, cleaner ingredients. And this food for less is just under a mile from the Walmart. That's a six minute drive or a 20 minute walk. It's old and decrepit and I don't it. It's hard for me to change. <laughs> In El Cajon, working for you, Brian White, CBS 8. Many people are preparing for the two local closures, but the question has now become, why are these stores closing? So far, Walmart has not given many details. CBS 8 Shannon Handy is working for you and spoke with a spokesperson. They say the closures are happening in part because they don't meet financial expectations. At the Walmart neighborhood market in Sherman Heights, we saw a steady flow of customers coming and going Tuesday afternoon. People who live in the area say it's always busy here, so they can't understand why after nearly 11 years in business, it's closing. This is like the whole neighborhood store. I don't know what we're supposed to do. Inside, signs have been posted announcing the store's last day, February 9th. We also noticed several empty shelves, including in the meat section where everything is 25% off. Once it shuts down, customers will have to travel further to shop. Many worry about that as well as the added price they'll have to pay in doing so. All these smaller stores are really expensive. They're like liquor slash some grocery. So I don't know where they're going to go. I guess downtown. Albertsons downtown, no parking, really hard to get to. This was so convenient. Albertsons is like an arm and a leg for what 
garages for a leg. <laughs> it's the same sentiment in El Cajon, where the Walmart at Parkway Plaza is also shutting down. Here, the entire store is 25% off. I talk to people taking advantage of those deals while they still can. I really don't like it. You know, it's like a family store to a lot of us. So, you know, now we got to find another Walmart on the other side of town. We reached out to Walmart to ask why these two stores are shutting down. In a lengthy statement, a spokesperson explained the decision was made based on several factors. Among them, the store is not performing as well as the company had hoped, and they were unable to reach mutual lease renewals with the property managers. The spokesperson went on to commend the store's employees and acknowledge customers, saying, We are grateful to the customers who have given us the privilege of serving them at our San Diego and El Cajon stores. We look forward to continuing to serve them at any of our many locations across the area on Walmart.com and through a delivery to their home or business. Shannon Handy, CBS 8. Again, the last day for both stores is February 9th. However, you may want to make a visit before then to take advantage of the steep sales that Walmart is offering to clear out the shelves. Remember, if there is something that you would like us to look into, you can email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Thanks for joining us here on CBS 8 Plus. We'll see you next time.